This is the gruesome tale of the hidden horror of Dive Rock, a hideously grim continuation of the Mead Hall Massacre questline involving a hapless group of Nords during the events of Morrowind's Blood Moon DLC. To begin the quest, as it is one of 11 hidden quests in Oblivion with no journal entries or directions, we'll use some old-fashioned detective work to piece together the clues peppered throughout the Vallis Mountains region for those brave enough to venture into the unforgiving cold. When visiting the city of Chadenhall, we begin to hear unsettling whispers of a hidden horror present at Dive Rock in the Vallis Mountains. Also, the fandom page claims, I could neither find hide nor hair of this rumor, to be honest. Although, if you have any evidence to the contrary, let me know. Instead, we shall follow my own path of discovery. As during the video exposing Oblivion's secret skooma den, we were led first to walk a camp just north of Chadenhall. There, Kamona Tong thugs reside, collecting skooma from the nearby Aurum gang at Chadenhall and deposit it weekly in a hollowed out rock in King's Crest Cavern, presumably to be collected for distribution in their homeland of Morrowind at a later date, though the end of the quest was unfortunately cut. However, we find northeast of this King's Crest Cavern, at the foot of the steep slopes of the Jural and Vallis Mountains, an unmarked road connecting the camp with Chadenhall to the south. It's there we find a single Nord in what's called Aaron's camp, and his name is Torben as he sits by his tent and waits. And this is where a first dark clue begins. See, Morrowind fans may remember that name, Aaron. Aaron being a female Bosma who was found in the Anders Trade House in Margan. If I can help, I will, but don't take too much time. She's the master trainer of the light armor skill and a major trainer in sneak and acrobatics. And she must be an acrobat of some repute, as now during the events of Oblivion, once her acrobatic skill is 70 or higher, we can speak with either trainer Svara in Leowen. I'm Sarava. I'm an advanced trainer in acrobatics. Did I mention I hate dogs? So keep your dogs away from me, unless they want some advanced lessons in plunging from great heights. I can't teach you anything you don't already know. Aaron could, though. She's a brilliant acrobat. Last I heard, she'd set up camp in the mountains, somewhere in the northeast corner of the province. You should look for her there. Or Ganradel in the city of Chidenhall. Ganradel. I train dogs. And people prefer dogs. People! I teach them advanced acrobatics, up and jump. Dogs! I teach them to bite people. If you require further training, you might consider venturing into the mountains in the north of Cyrodiil, Aaron's camp specifically. Aaron's a very gifted acrobat and could teach you anything you needed to know. Curious that Aaron is nowhere in sight. Good evening. More so, perhaps, that Torben has taken her stead to offer acrobatics training. The seated Nord, seeing our confusion, welcomes. Hello there. Welcome to Aaron's camp. Questioning Torben's word, we greet. Hello there. So, this is Aaron's camp, I hear. But where's Aaron? Yeah, it's her camp. I don't know where she is, though. Ah, for that matter, I don't know who she is either. No one was here, so I thought I'd settle in. I was actually guided by two trainers to Erin herself. Will she be back at any time? You came all this way for training from Erin? You must be really disappointed that she's not here. Well, I haven't ever seen her, so I guess you're out of luck there. But if you want, I could train you. I'm pretty skilled myself. And I could always use the money. Be seeing you. Seriously suspecting foul play, we begin to search the camp for Aaron, waiting to happen across her remains. And oddly finding a vase with flowers in it in the nearby tent. Perhaps a tad feminine for a hardy Nord. Well, it's too early to judge. Regardless, we continue searching northwest, and it's only when gazing up at a jagged formation jutting out of the monumental mountain 
Do we nearly trip over a corpse? However, this is no Bosma acrobat at all, but instead a Breton man sprawled out in upper class finery. Is this another victim of Tonda Butcher? Perhaps the rumors of Dive Rock are due to the Nord serial killer. Hurriedly searching this man's body for clues, finding a black and burgundy outfit, fur boots and helm to battle the frigid frost, plus pickaxe gripped in his palm. The pieces of the puzzle all begin to coalesce when we finally find a letter on his person that clarifies. Dearest Father, I know it's always been your dream to travel to Cyrodiil, to climb the lofty mountains and reach the peak known as Dive Rock, and gaze down at the full beauty of the Imperial Province. But I beseech you, be careful. We've both heard the tales of the creature known as the horror of Dive Rock. But in truth, what concerns me most is your lack of grace. Oh, Father, you know it pains me to say it, but you're clumsy. You always have been. You can't walk up a flight of oh. stairs without crashing down to the bottom at least once. How can you possibly hope to scale a mountain range? Ah. Please, Father, I beg you, call off your expedition. I fear the worst. Your loving daughter, Fiona. And now we've learned the tragic truth. This poor Breton, André Labouche, died trying to climb this dive rock, succumbing not to a Nord, but a different tragedy altogether. Curiously, we never learn of Aaron's fate. However, now, the mystery of dive rock has deepened, and we fear the only way we're going to learn the truth of the supposed horror is to scale the mountain ourselves. From Aaron's camp, we scramble up the side of Dive Rock from the southeast, laboring against the near sheer verticality of much of the climb. Somehow, making it to the top of the slope in one piece, we're now able to ride via horseback and come across a small campfire on top of Dive Rock, still blazing, its inhabitants markedly absent. If we move past the tent for a moment and stand on the southernmost tip of Dive Rock, a message window will appear indicating that we have a rare view of the Imperial Province. We then see three location markers added to our map, trailing their way to Chaden Hall, being King's Crest Cavern, Fanarchus, and Quickwater Cave. Indeed, on a clear day, this site offers one of the most spectacular views in the province. Speaking of day, it seems the weather is about to turn and we must make shelter soon. And so we make our way back to the tent, spying two empty bedrolls, wondering, where are the inhabitants? Next to it, the small fire is still conspicuously burning bright. And we find a small sack of various supplies as well as ink and quill. As next to said sack is a journal, clearly of the departed campers that left in a haste, that reads... Agnar's Journal by Agnar the Unwavering, Entry 1. When I took on the role of Chieftain of Thursk, when I accepted the beautiful Svenja Snow Song as my advisor, and then my bride, I never imagined how quickly my life would change. I went to the Isle of Solstheim for some much needed rest, and found it in the mead soaked halls of Thursk. But when I met Svenja, my sweet Svenja, I became entangled in an epic story the likes of which I had only read about in fables and children's tales. Svenja told me of the fateful night when a hideous creature known as the Udafricta attacked the Mead Hall, killing rampantly, leaving her the only survivor. The creature was slain by a champion, and Thursk had its new chieftain. But it wasn't long before they moved on to some new challenge, some new adventure. And that's where I entered the tale. Svenja Snowsong, with her ice blue eyes and flaxen hair, gained my love. Soon after, I became her husband and the Mead Hall's new chieftain. In truth, I'd never been happier. But Svenja, my dear wife, existed in quiet misery 
constantly haunted by the memory of the Udafricta and the damage it had wrought on the Mead Hall and the people she had loved. Night after night, my dear woke up screaming, her face etched in horror, and a single word issuing from her lips, Udafricta, Udafricta, Udafricta. I feared for my wife's sanity and happiness. But it was she who found a solution to her problem. As a warrior, she told me she must confront her fear. She must defeat it. The Udafricta was dead, yes. But where did it come from? Was it unique? Would more of the creatures come and wreck havoc once again? Would I, her loving husband, be killed? And so she corresponded with explorers and researchers all across Tamriel, until she found the answers she had been looking for. The Udafricta was in fact not unique, but the offspring of an ancient Udafricta matron. In order to end the nightmares, in order to prevent any more destruction, we would need to hunt down and kill the Udafricta matron no matter where or how. By Ismir, we've been searching and searching and searching some more. But finally it came, the lucky break we'd been hoping for. The creature has been spotted by a shepherd in the remote highlands of Skyrim. We found his trail and tracked it for days, crossing the border into the Imperial province. Here in the frigid mountains, we met with a local hunter who tried to warn us away from the area, citing an old legend about a deadly creature known as the Horror of Dive Rock, a monster credited with slaying a dozen people and just as much cattle. Could this creature be the very Udafricta matron we seek? Perhaps, unlike its child on Solstheim, the matron moves from location to location, and it's this mobility that has thus far prevented its killing or capture. We've made camp at Dive Rock, reportedly the highest natural observation point in all of Cyrodiil. From here, we can see for miles. We'll keep watch night and day. We're close. So very close. Svenja and I can feel it in our very bones. Indeed, Svenja has always been particularly in tune with such things, and is convinced the Udafricta matron is close. Svenja has grown tired of my constant writing, but this journal will serve as a record for our travels and defeat against the Udafricta. She's staring at me angrily, impatiently, right now as I write, but this entry is too important. Finally, on this third day of watching, we spotted it. The Udafricta matron. It is unlike anything we've ever laid eyes on. A giant, troll-like beast that seems to waver and shimmer in the cold, like the feral form of winter itself. We're off now to trudge down the mountain, weapons in hand, and give the horror of Dive Rock its due. Failure and horror. We engaged the monster with all the force we could muster, but it was a travesty beyond comprehension. Svenja, my beautiful Svenja, my dear wife was killed instantly consumed by the beast nearly whole, and though it shames me to write these words, I could think of nothing more at the time than escape. I took flight, returning to our camp here on Dive Rock to collect my thoughts and nerve. I haven't much time. After this quick entry, I will march out and meet the Udafricta matron once more. It's sure to track me back to this campsite anyway, so our confrontation is inevitable. Can I even hope to defeat this monstrosity? One thing is certain, Svenja and I came hastily unprepared. My steel axe? Useless. 
my dear wife's frostworm bow, completely ineffective and swallowed whole still in Svenja's hand. The beast appears to be a creature of the cold and is likely nearly completely resistant to it. I would attack with fire if I had any on hand, but there's no time. No time to travel to a mage's guild and procure an enchanted blade or hire the services of a sorcerer. My steel axe will have to do. And so I return to battle now and hope beyond hope that I may slay the wretched monster that has brought so much grief to so many people. And if not, I take comfort in knowing I will soon rejoin my beautiful bride in the gilded halls of Sovngarde. If someone is reading this hastily written journal, I'm likely dead. And pray to Ismir that you have had more luck against the creature than I, Agnar the Unwavering, Chieftain of Thursk. <laughs> Poor Agnar and Svenja. Gods only know what happened to the Nord Chieftain, but we must try and help him if possible against this hideous creature. Although according to the journal, the Udafric Dematron is likely to track us to the camp. As the weather's visibility has turned against us, we're forced to take shelter until morning. Thankful for the fire and Labouche's furs, we settle in for the long night ahead. We soon learn this is a horrific mistake as we're awakened by a whinny behind the tent only to find the beast has hunted us down. The beast, completely invisible, kills our horse and we are then woefully at the invisible horror's mercy. Instead of sleeping, we don our trusty iron armor and cast our mind back to what Agnar had urged about using fire to attack the frosty foe. Equipping our trusty fire-infused sword Goldbrand, we also stuck up on flame arrows and begin our trek over the mountainside to the southeast. Cresting the hill, we soon spy in the undulating hills below, a queer shimmering in the pale moonlight. Approaching via stealth, we take aim with our bow and see a corpse of what must be poor Agnar being guarded by the translucent matron. Loosing a single fire arrow, we find our mark true. Enraged, the Uda Frichter matron barrels up the slope towards us and we quickly about face, trudging back to camp as fast as we can, weighed down by iron armor and ankle deep in the snow to face the horror atop Dive Rock's precarious perch. With the final groan, the beast plummets to its doom, sliding down into the nothingness below. Unfortunately, for honor's sake, we must follow and realize where it must have landed. Torburn, still seated, must have no idea how close he is to the shimmering horror. Inspecting the flickering mass, we see the Udafrichta somehow resembles a troll in size and stature. On its remains, we then find Svenja's promised frostworm bow, enchanted with a tidy 15 points of frost damage. We also find her furs and decomposed remains, as the troll had truly swallowed her whole. Leaving the beast's corpse to rot where it lay, we carry Svenja's leavings up the mountain, finding on the ridge Agnar's fresh body. 
taking his fabled ineffectual war axe, we look over the Nord and feel it only right he's reunited with his love. And so, back atop Dive Rock, we lay out their remains to overlook Cyrodiil, hoping they'd found Sovngarde together, and that no one ever need fear the accursed Udafrichter again. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, or if you want to support the channel in a more personal way, you can join our Patreon with different rewards available. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, try.